It is 3.50 p.m. on a Friday afternoon. The nurse, Carmen, has been caring for Mr. Fred Spector for the past five days after he sustained a left-sided stroke. He is now medically stable and scheduled to be discharged to an inpatient rehabilitation center. She is contacting the staff receiving Mr. Spector at the rehab center in order to give report. Hi, yes, this is Carmen Powell, the nurse who's been caring for Mr. Fred Spector at our hospital. I'm calling to give report to the receiving nurse. Great, I'll hold. Hi, yes, this is Carmen Powell. Will you be the nurse receiving Mr. Spector? But arrangements have been made for discharge. The primary team at our hospital has made arrangements for his discharge and he's ready for transfer to your rehab facility. But how can this be? We thought he had a bed. Oh, you were expecting him before three? But I couldn't schedule the ambulance until four. That's why I waited to call a report. So because you can't take transfers after a certain time, he can't be transferred until tomorrow or maybe even Monday? Okay, but this is a disappointment. This is a vexing problem that can face caregivers and patients alike. It requires intervention. A method to solve this problem is to use a fishbone analysis. You are about to view a demonstration on how to create a cause and effect diagram, a fishbone diagram. The team in this video is creating a fishbone diagram to provide a visual and systematic way of illustrating many possible causes of a problem that's happening on one unit of a busy urban hospital. The diagram also will help the team sort the causes into useful categories. This way, the team will avoid focusing on symptoms or hasty solutions to a problem. Let me introduce the interdisciplinary team. Loretta Consiglio Ward, facilitator. On the left is Thea Ekman, case manager. On the right is Teresa Fields, patient escort department manager. On the left is Carmen Powell, charge nurse on a med surge unit. On the right is Leanne Riesenberg, advanced practice nurse with the hospitalist group. On the left is Matthew Judd, internal medicine attending. On the right is Abraham Joseph, laboratory department manager. Terry Foy, radiology department manager. The participants are assuming roles that may not represent their actual professions. No actual patient names have been used. We also have students who are here to observe and learn about the process of constructing a fishbone diagram. The students are Gospel Porquez of the Department of Nursing and Ashley Bradley of the Department of Pharmacy. We have a problem. No matter what we try to do in this unit, we can't seem to discharge our patients before 2 p.m. And over the past month, we have exceeded capacity in our emergency department. An analysis of our unit's discharge patterns has identified that 75% of our discharge patients are leaving after 2 p.m. We will do a fishbone diagram to analyze this problem. And during this exercise, I'm going to ask each of you to identify what you think are the major contributing causes to the delay in discharging our patients. We will group these according to four or five major heading categories. I will start by using the four P's, which are people, processes, policies, and plant. And for the purposes of our exercise, plant will be equivalent to environment. And as we begin to discuss our identified causes, we can certainly expand our categories. And I will ask questions as we begin to read each identified cause to give you an opportunity to help clarify and dive a little bit deeper. I will first start by diagramming on the flip chart what the fishbone diagram will look like. The facilitator draws on the flip chart, starting with the square in the far right side of the paper. The team has already agreed on the problem statement or effect. In this case, effect is that this unit can't seem to discharge patients by 2 p.m. Write the effect in the center of the square, also known as the head of the fish. Then draw a straight line extending from the box to the left side of the paper. This is the backbone of the fish. The major categories this team is using are people, processes, policies, and plant. Write two categories above the backbone line and two below the backbone line. 
Then draw lines connecting each major cause heading to the backbone. Here is a tip. Make sure to leave enough space on the flip chart between the headings and the backbone to record numerous causes. Often the causes are not equally distributed. For example, some problems will have causes that clump around only one or two headings. Okay, so we know we have a problem discharging our patients before 2 p.m. I want you to think about what are the contributing causes to why there is a delay in our unit for discharging our patients. Each of you have sticky notes in front of you, and I want you to identify three to five possible causes to this delay. Uh, try to, you could of course try to identify more if you know of more, but at least try to identify three. And then I'll write one cause on each, on one sticky note. And then I'll read each aloud, and as a group, we'll decide under which major heading that that cause belongs. And throughout this process, I will, and you will, have opportunities to ask questions to help clarify things so that we have a shared understanding of the cause. Any questions? Okay, then let's begin. As the team clarifies and asks why is such and such causing this problem, additional causes or sub-causes are revealed. To capture these, the facilitator will ask for a volunteer to write these on sticky notes. For sub-causes, the volunteer will use a different color sticky note, which will help the team remember that they are sub-causes. Brainstorm all the possible causes of the problem without criticizing or analyzing anyone's ideas. At this point, don't try to fit the ideas into a framework. Brainstorming the whole list first helps people think creatively without fear of criticism. There are several ways to brainstorm. This is just one way. This method starts with each individual working in silence. Afterward, there is a discussion to encourage team members to build on one another's perspectives and ideas. When the silent working time is over, collect all your sticky notes and give them to the facilitator who will read the causes aloud to the team. Clarify your own ideas as necessary. As each idea is read aloud, the team must decide on a major heading or cause under which it would fit. Place each sticky note under the appropriate heading. Involve the entire team in the heading selection. Causes can be placed in several places if they relate to more than one category. Okay, our first one reads, skilled nursing facility unable to accept patient. That's an external environment issue. So under what heading would we place this? I think that would go under plant or environment. Everyone agree? The next one says, family changes mind about discharge placement, rehab versus nursing home. That goes under people. How about change in patient condition? That goes under people also. Seems pretty obvious. The next one is arrangements for home care. Someone tell me more about why arrangements for home care would be causing a delay in discharge. Sometimes we have a patient that doesn't need to go to a nursing home but does need assistance in the home. It could be either nursing care or equipment needs. And if we're going to need equipment, that usually requires pre-authorization from the insurance company. And then, is there someone at home to accept the delivery of the equipment? Those are actually two sub-causes, uh, nursing care needs and equipment needs. Could I have a volunteer to record these? I'll do it. Great. Thank you. If you would record them on a different color sticky note. So, is this a people, process, policy, or plan issue? Well, in my mind, arrangements for home care and the sub-causes that we've identified really sort of straddle people and processes. Would everyone agree? Yes. Okay. Okay, then, we'll place it between the two. And when we diagram our fishbone, we would connect lines to both. Moving on, testing. Someone tell me more about testing. Well, by the time the patient is ready to be discharged, not all of the diagnostic studies might have been completed or the results haven't reached the physician. So that's going to cause a delay for patient leaving by 2 p.m. And I may not have been the one who ordered that test, but I am the one responsible for the discharge paperwork. Sometimes I can't do that until I have a specialist interpretation. 
In the labs, certain tests are bashed for cost containment purposes. If the specimens from the floor don't make the cutoff time established for the batch, results will be delayed for several hours. Mm -hmm. And depending on what the result is, I may have to consult with my collaborating physician, and this will um, contribute to delay in discharge. There is also another issue. There is no systematic way of communicating the patient discharge information to the lab for them to prioritize the test. Some discharge delays are related to not having enough escorts to take the patient to testing. It's a number of sub-causes that we've identified. So where should we place testing and all the sub-causes we've talked about? I think it goes under both people and process. Would everyone agree? Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll place it here. This is another example of how from one causal statement we start to identify additional multiple sub-causes that are contributing to our delay in discharge. The next one is transportation issues. Someone tell me more about that. Sometimes there's not enough escort to take the patient down to the lobby, but then also sometimes the family's not available to pick the patient up. Some families are only available after work. And that's actually two separate causes availability of escort to transport and availability of pa family to pick up the patient. So where would we place the escort issue? Process. And the family issue? Under people. Family and escort issues are not the only transportation problems. Uh, ambulances may not always be available when we want them to take the patients to the skilled nursing facilities, and some ambulances are not available to after 4 p.m. I agree that the ambulance issue is important. I had a patient the other day that we were trying to discharge, and because we didn't have them out by 3, they would not accept them. So where would we decide to place this? Well, I think that's a sub-issue of transportation. Would everyone agree? Continue to read all sticky notes aloud, clarifying the causes and where they belong on the fishbone until the team runs out of ideas. The facilitator frequently asks for clarification, asking questions like, why does this happen? The facilitator needs to see if everyone is okay with what has been decided before moving on to the next item. If you are planning to facilitate the creation of a fishbone diagram, here are some tips to keep in mind. Continue to ask why and help the team think more deeply about causes. When sub-causes are identified, record them on different color sticky notes to make it easier to remember that they are sub-causes. In addition, focus attention to places on the chart where ideas are few. Now we've identified a number of contributing causes in these three areas, but we have not identified a lot related to our policy. Is there anything about our policy that may be causing a delay in discharges? Well. Does anybody know exactly what our policy does say? Not really. That's a great question, and that's when we need to research. Would you write that on a blue uh, sticky so that we can remember to research that question? After all ideas are on the fishbone diagram, interpret or test for root causes by one or more of the following. Look for causes that appear repeatedly within or across major cause categories. Once the fishbone diagram is finished, send it to the team members for review and additions. Ask them, what is missing? And add new causes identified by the team members. Use a consensus or ranking process to identify the most probable cause or causes. Then gather data to determine relative frequencies of the different causes. Finally, the team discusses where they can intervene and plans a rapid test of change.